All right, the hang on, the hangout on air is live, and I am Kali Glover, also known as Coleco Vision. I want to welcome you guys to my hangout here. I call this today my uh, island hangout because I am out of town right now, so I'm not at home. I'm in a hotel room here, so you can see that. Yeah, this like a little hotel vibe, but I'm actually on um, uh, Coronado Island. Um, in Coronado Bay, just uh, a little bit past San Diego. It's a beautiful island here, um, beautiful hotel. Uh, I'm attending an event right now. My internet connection is hotel internet, so it might get a little choppy and weird, but, you know, we wanted to keep it going for you. So that's why we got to do it. I, I missed a couple other ones from doing um, this is the season now to do events, attend conferences, conventions, and all that. We just held a um, event last week. Uh, me and my fiance Raven, where she was teaching people how to do red carpet interviews. You know, to interview stars and use, like, make them feel like they're on the red carpet. Make you feel like uh, you're on the red carpet, so you can get any kind of star that you want. Learn some techniques and be able to actually personally talk to them, connect with them. It was really a very great event. My my boy was there, and he was there helping us out and learning a lot. He brought a guest as well. We had uh, other people there that were, you know, they may be musicians, but they came to see a whole different side of um, dealing with the business out here. So the business of music goes beyond many times you know there's a lot of things that are interconnected so I want to talk to you guys today in general kind of about some of that stuff then we'll talk about a couple other things I know um when we had our previous uh, hangout and we were talking about compression it was super popular people kept hitting me with tons of questions about it and wanting to um, get deeper into that. So, you know, I'll just bounce some of that stuff off of some of the folks here, put my spin on some stuff as well. As I told you previously, um, I'll tell you some more as we go along. So now is not the time, but Crush It With Compressors, my compressor course that I redo periodically. I'm coming out with a new 2.0 version updated. And since that was so popular, I'm going to let you guys know some of the things. Also have you um, tell me some things you might want me to include in the 2.0 version. So it is coming very, very soon. Um, um, it's going to be a surprise annou announcement. So I'm not going to say any more about that. I just wanted to let you know I didn't forget about you, those of you that asked me about that and wanted to know how to go further with it. So that information is coming. Just stay tuned. Compression is the key, as you well know. So I definitely want to show you the way to get on the fast track with using it to make the best mix as you possibly can. And so, but anyway, we got some folks coming in here. I wanted to um, acknowledge the people we got on here. I told you my boy Maad Hotep is on here um, where he, he hung out with us. So he was at the event last week with us and helping us. And we hung till the wee hours of the morning, setting up and tearing down the equipment and going through things. He was taking all kinds of pictures, posted up there, even caught me dancing. That's <laughs> so embarrassing, but hey, you know, got to do it for the ladies. <laughs> and um, uh, it was cool. Very, very cool. It was great to see him. Um, he brought down one of his protégés, um, somebody that he's uh, training to come up and let them see a whole nother side of all these things, you know. And uh, we got we we got uh, Jason down here. Gavin just joined us. We got Mitchell on here, and um, Angela. Is that say Angela there? Yeah, I'm seeing. Uh, but I'm gonna have every, have everybody um, introduce yourself. And so, in fact, Angela, you're brand new here. I don't recall meeting you before. So, welcome. Tell us who you are. Tell us a little about bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing, what you want to do, and what yes, you're trying. To get Angela's got to hustle. She got to get back to her husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just got invited on. And I didn't know about it, so I was like, "Hey, I'll come on for a minute." Um, my husband just got home from work, but it's okay. I come out, hang out with you guys for a little while. Um, wow. but yeah, I produce, sing, um, I do songwriting, and um, I don't know what else. Um, I'm trying. I want. What I want to do is actually get into. I want to get some music into like music libraries. That's my initial goal right now, um, which is actually a new goal of mine. 
initially I was just doing some beat making and stuff like that and some writing and singing, but now I wanted to get more into commercial music like, you know, uh, film, TV, and games and stuff like that. So oh, I, I just got out of school uh, back in November and I'm re redoing my business plan right now so that I can kind of get those things in the work, those, the things that are up here, start executing them. So oh, that's go. where I'm at right now. You know, like, rebranding. you sound like a success waiting to happen, boy, because you talk about <laughs> all the right stuff. You know, you got the business plans and you're just organized. And I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like what I'm hearing. <laughs> that's, I'm cool. that's cool. That's the way to start. <laughs> Studio looks nice, too. Do I see a, a B3 back there, a Hammond organ or something back uh, there? No, no, sir. That's, um, that's uh, some, some Alisa's uh, drums. Uh, of course, you got the MPC and the old school stuff right here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But I, I got, um, yeah, I went from hardware to software, so now I'm using Logic and Reason and Pro Tools and Machine, and I have my my controller right here on my oh, yeah. control surface. Got my yeah. Kai, you know. Oh, okay. When do I get some beats? Uh, when you get some beats, um, it's it's coming together now. You know, it's just. I'm no, just I'm talking it. about me getting some beats. Me. Oh, I'll re I, I'll make sure we get you. Wow. We'll mark that out. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. all kind of stuff back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got. Yeah. I got. Uh, oh my! I put my guitar away. I got it. it's up in the case now. I got some. I have some instruments. Uh, I like to do some. You know, I have the uh, kabasa, kabasa, some. Some shakers and some flutes and stuff like that. Oh, check it out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> gear it up. Go ahead. I, I love try. It. I'm about to get some things popping real soon. So oh, cool. we're working on it. Oh, cool, cool. I love it. Yes. Okay. Thank so you for having me on. Here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, well, fellas, y'all slipping now. You see, she's showing you how to do it right. Come on. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's cold in this? You can say this is wrong, whatever. I got all these guys that make beats. The thought of getting a beat from a woman, like somebody might think that that's um, something. Oh, I'm gonna have it hard as a woman. Me, the idea of me getting a beat from a, a female, I'm like, man, that beat is sexier. I think that's <laughs> sexier. Me, it's, huh? Yeah, it, it just it feels better because I got all these beats from these guys, and it's like, I got a beat from a woman's perspective. Whatever that means, I have no idea. You know, no, no, yes, hey. Just, yeah, Wait, just the so idea. He just attended, he just attended a, a woman's event that we well, it wasn't really a woman's event, but it was women, <laughs> women there that we just did over the weekend and everything. And one thing that you, I'm sure you learned, Mott, is women rule the world as far as uh, all this, the patterns, things, how money gets spent, how trends get made, and all that. So I think you're smart to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this young lady here, that's the smart cutting edge move. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that mindset. You know, that's what I need people to think about. You know, especially when I start putting these things on the market. So, yeah. When, yeah. when you walk in here and you say you <laughs> sing, um, I done, I done told you, you're going to be asked to sing. I know. I know. Okay. I know. She ain't I'm scared. Like, she ain't scared. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you going to sing? What am I going to sing? Ooh, you want me to sing right now? Seriously? Oh, dude. Yeah, right now. No, no, no warning. Wow. I've okay. had some good days. Okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me think, let me think. I'm trying to think. Do I go original or do I do something that's, do I do something that's already out there? Let me think about that for a minute. Who's next? Is this well, somebody else okay, next? Okay, well, <laughs> national, let's sing the okay, national anthem. Okay, that's that's the one that really tells. Say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, who oh, are so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through perilous fight, or oh, the ramparts we watch, who oh, are so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air. Gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Y'all better stand up and put your hands on your heart there. Put your hands on your heart. Stand on up, Will. You know 
y'all calling me out. I haven't even warmed up or nothing, yeah. but there you go. <laughs> you should be thankful I'm not asked to sing. All wrong. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and on this end, it sounded like you had auto-tune on your voice because the audio was glitching. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I was just her singing in tune, bro. <laughs> uh, I got on here one time and I did a little. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll make the real singer sound extra good at following me. <laughs> All right. Well, who's next? Who's next on there? Come on. I see. Uh, we got Gavin on here. Let's 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 check you out, my brother. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Uh, this is Gavin. Uh, I'm from Arkansas. I just recently moved to Columbus, Georgia. I went to uh, SAE Nashville. Just graduated in June, so right now, like I said, I stay in Columbus, but I interned uh, for May Studios, Ben Allen, and I also do social media promo for uh, Tree Sound Studios. And I've been producing, making beats for like 12 years. And uh, just to go back to what Mod said about uh, females producing, the first beat battle I was in, I lost to a woman. So oh, I just wanted, yeah. to, just wanted <laughs> to throw that. I just wanted to throw that in there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, <laughs> just right now, you know, just networking and just trying to learn as much as I can about the industry that I'm trying to be in, and just you know, trying to be around people I can learn from. So appreciate y'all for you know letting me join the hangout. Oh man, thank you for coming on down, man. That that's that's really cool. To, um, it's the right thing to um, you know, come in and learn from everybody else. But the other thing is to come in and bounce back because you 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 say you lost to a woman. On that, that oh no, day. that was my that was my first time. Yeah, then I started the doing thing. work. Yeah, and then I started women doing come from a whole other thing, man. They come from um, they coming from the emotion and everything. A lot of times that that's the first thing way to tap in. So um. Yeah, I think you're smart, man. You come back, look at what's going on, and uh, just say, okay, what they doing over there too? Because they're they're the ones that's making all the purchasing decisions. <laughs> yeah, then I eventually started winning B battles after that. But yeah, I definitely had to learn first. So no, I yeah. noticed you didn't say you sing. Oh, no, definitely, I can't do that. <laughs> what's your main uh, thing, man? What's your main like? You got a main instrument or main? Are you mainly an engineer, mainly a producer, mainly a musician? I mean, honestly, I grew up more different than than most people. Like I said, I'm from Arkansas, so I'm from a small, small town. Mm. Like my church was off, you know, one of them back road yeah. type churches. So I grew up sitting next to the piano. Like I said, I moved around a lot. So I was in orchestra. I was in jazz band. Oh, cool. I was in a I was in a punk rock band, and I studied hip hop. And then, like I said, where I'm from, like right there in the Delta, so it's a blues town. So I grew up part of the around the Chitlin circuit. You know, Robert Johnson, yeah. Al Green's from Forest City, Arkansas. So you know, growing up around all that. So right now, I mean, I'm just a sponge. I just soak up whatever, but. Oh, but dude, you got the roots, though. That's You seriously got the roots. You're right yeah, in Yeah, yeah. So right now, I just, I really can't categorize what I do, but I went to school for, you know, audio technology. So right now, I'm just focusing on the engineer side because I know it helps my production just to get a better understanding of different instruments and this and that. So, oh, yeah, okay. I, I have to say just an engineer for now. Okay. And um, so from the engineering point, so that's the one side that, um where do you find like production in that? And because they're all intertwined, I know. But where do you find, say, music production versus being a musician in there? Which instrument sticks out? Um, I'd have to say bass guitar. That's bass where guitar. I, I, yeah, that's what I grew up playing. But I played lead guitar in the church, and I played viola in orchestra. So. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Very good, man. Very good. Cool. Well, um, welcome to the call, and um, you know we're just hanging out, and we're going to be touching on a couple of little things. We won't make this too long. I want to respect you guys' time. I know it's late, especially for Mitchell, because he he came in. It's like four a.m. or something. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, uh, who's next? Who wants to say something next? I see. Uh, I see. Uh, oh, Myrish is in here. What's up, man? Good to see you. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Good. What time is it in Australia? It's uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. So yeah, you, I was saying, you looking awful bright eyed right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I, I did a jazz band recording last last Thursday. 
uh, drums, uh, double bass, uh, grand piano, uh, vibraphone. And that was my first experience to record that setup in a live gig situation. And I uh, happened to produce a CD of that performance. And uh, it was very tricky because I never recorded grand piano and vibraphone before. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah. So what did you so, do? Uh, this sounds like a good learning moment for everybody. Why don't you take us through the process of what you did and um, any uh, challenges you faced and how you solved them to get through the session? Yeah. Uh, I didn't have time for a sound check because it was a very sort of small, intimate sort of gig. And uh, they didn't want me to run around, you know, setting up mics and do everything before the gig. So my setup was separate to the front of house setup uh, because it was a small uh, venue. They didn't have too many mics for the front of house. So pretty much before the band started, I put the mics uh, on the instruments. So I had a kick mic, a snare top and bottom, 57s. Mm -hmm. Uh, two road M fives overheads. Uh, I throw a condenser cardioid uh, AKG on the piano, right in the middle, very close to the um, hammers where you get the sound. You had a right pair, in the middle. One space pair, or X Y, or what? Oh, just straight. No, just one. Because oh, you just had a mono mic. On it? Yeah. Yeah, just mono because. The place was so small. There was a lot of sound leakage, you know, from drums, from the vibraphone, from everything. And I was thinking the lesser the number of mics, the easier for me to separate Later. the sound. Yeah. Now, um, here's something, because um, uh, I don't know if you guys, how, many, how often you run into this. So in a live situation, recording um, an acoustic piano, can be very challenging, you know. Mm. So how did you go? You, you said you put this, a single mic in, and yeah. you close to the hammers, open or closed lid. Open. Open. Uh, or lift the lid it was open. open yeah. yeah, fully so open. How did, how did you uh, maintain the separation for the sound that gets underneath the lid? Uh, I I put another. Uh, oh well. I, I didn't pick up much sound as far as I could I could tell because there was a lot of bleeding from the vibraphone getting into the piano mic. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I did the best I could uh, in that situation because if I had more mics on the piano, it would have had more of the vibraphone coming through it. So did you, you said you used an AKG 414? No, no, no. It's really basic AKG 420. Just basic. Oh, like a 420 or 420, a pencil mic, right? No, no, no. Uh, it's a, a large diaphragm. Uh, oh, okay. So it's B, B420, to the four. yeah. Okay. It's just a basic uh, condenser. Then I put Shure KSM27 on the vibraphone mm -hmm. at an angle slightly away from the drum kit so it's not picking up the drums very much. But it was. Facing the piano, so it was picking up the piano. Right, there right. Was nothing I could, nothing I could do about it. What kind of polar patterns were on the microphone? Uh, they're all cardioid. Uh, I, I just were they did, were they switchable or were they just fixed? Uh, on AKG, it was switchable, and on uh, the Shure One KSM, it was just straight yeah. cardioid. Yeah. I couldn't change, and but. I tracked the whole band, and the bass was straight DI in mm -hmm. uh, through the amp. But when I tracked the whole gig, I mean, they're a jazz band, amazing musicians. Uh, it already sounded, it was mixed, or, you know, they had the dynamics worked out and everything. But I was trying to do the separation using uh, EQ mm -hmm. and panning. Obviously, I put the piano. More towards the left, because from an audience point of view, the piano was on the left-hand side. So I put piano more towards the left. The vibes was in the middle. So I put him in more like right and middle. And mm -hmm. then I, I used EQ pretty much and a bit of compression to eliminate 
the uh, bass bass guitar, I mean, the not bass guitar, the double bass and the piano sounds and, you know, the bleeding as much as I could. And same with the drums. So, uh, so the 420 that you had on the piano, you said it did have a variable pattern? Yes. And, but you had, but you put it on cardioid? Yeah, I did. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm pushing this to think, you know, this might help you for the next time or whatever to think about yeah. the scenarios. So what were the patterns, first of all, that were on the mic? Uh, Omni, Omni, obviously, cardioid, and obviously. And what else? And eight. Figure eight. eight okay. Did you try the figure eight? No, I didn't. <laughs> did you Did you think about this now in your scenario? Could yeah. you have used the figure eight to help you with that? Yeah, to pick up the sound under the lid. You mean and no, 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 no. Oh, I mean, yes. I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm. Th yeah. I'm thinking a different way now. See, because in a scenario yeah. like that, what I would do is when you you have a figure eight microphone. The yeah. biggest thing about a figure eight microphone that you know is it, it would shape like an eight, and yeah. so the rejection patterns are on the side. That's what you want to. Ah. Think. Yeah. So that's where you want to, that's the part, see, if you have the, the bottom part and the top part, so the bottom part and the top part, depending on mm. where you angle it, can catch your hammers and everything, or catch the strings, however you want to do that. Yeah. The other thing will catch the, the bouncing off of the lid, so that's all part of the piano sound. sound the projection yeah. at the sides is what will keep the other instruments out. So uh, how you angle it according to where it's facing, if the bass is over here, or, you mm -hmm. know, drums, guitars, or whatever, how you angle that yeah. is to determine how that thing will sit in there without needing to be, use as much EQ to make yeah, this yeah, yeah. come together, you know. So yeah. little things like that can make a huge difference, just knowing mm. the patterns that are available on the mics. And yeah. also, even when you have um, cardioid patterns, on your yeah. microphones. When you combine microphones in different ways, they make different patterns as well, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. you can combine cardioid patterns to widen your things to make super cardioid or to even even emulate almost a full omni pattern depending on how you say, uh, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that 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 in a live scenario is very helpful when you've got some challenging stuff and you've got limited resources, just how you place yeah, yeah. the microphone. Oh, make a huge difference. Yeah. Cool. I, I can post a link of one of the tracks if you if you like. I, yeah, I did the yeah. whole thing. Why don't I, you put I make it on the side? Everybody that's in here, there's a chat yeah. box on the side and yeah. where you guys can post links and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll do that in a in a minute. Uh, I, I I did do a bit of mixing. I used a few plugins, but it was very very less compared to a pop or a rock or any mainstream because it's jazz. It needs to be breathing. It needs to be softer. And when it yeah. gets louder, it needs to be louder. You don't need to. Uh, so all, all I used was a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's it. Nothing, nothing much really. No, oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah that makes a, it makes a big difference, man. Good, yeah. good, man. You've been definitely doing it up and staying busy. You know, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Um. Um. And we got a couple other new people on here that I haven't seen before, so y'all speak up, introduce yourself to me. Who wants to go next? Tell me who you are, what you do. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. Y'all are on here now. We can see you at the bottom. We see you. Speak on up, or I'm going to call somebody out. Okay, Urban, we got you, man. What's up, man? <laughs> oh, he had checked out and just gave me a snapshot now. Maybe you don't have your microphone on because. Uh, what about you, Mitchell? Uh, well, go ahead, Mitchell. Hey, Mitchell. You're a veteran, Mitchell. You're supposed to step on uh, up. What you doing, man? In fact, Mitchell, hold on, hold up for a second. Cause I want to get okay. Dwayne. I see Dwayne here. Dwayne's kicking back. All right. Yeah, yeah. We got you, bro. We got you. Spotlight. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing? What's Dwayne, up, man? From Toronto. Uh, um, side story, um, hey, uh, Cleek, uh, my, uh, distant cousin in, um, London, he said he used to work with you back in the day, back in 
84, Griffin, uh, D Sharpie goes by. I don't know if you remember him, but uh, hmm. says you're good people. He What's says, his name again? D Sharp. He goes by D Sharp these days. I don't, I don't even know. Hmm? D Sharp, yeah. Just look up some records. Uh, give him a Google. <laughs> He did, uh, was he going by that back in the day when I might have? No, been? he wasn't. He wouldn't tell me what it was either. Oh, he would? Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit of a time difference. He's like, I'm going to sleep. But I'm anyway. so terrible with names, man. You have to get a picture or something. Then I, like, uh, this is just the uh, random hangout. Any random questions we could just throw out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just kind of uh, getting on it because, like I said, this is kind of my island hangout. I'm calling it today. I'm down in uh, Coronado Island right now. Oh, wow. Um, for an event, so yeah. uh, I'm just I uh, had to get in a hotel room and kind of do my thing and get on with you guys. Couldn't you know? Couldn't miss the Thursday. I'm like, gotta hang out with the fellas, gotta hang out. Well, thanks for jumping on. Uh, <laughs> that is uh, amazing that you do that because you are a very busy man. Uh, I didn't really have much to add today. I was just listening to information. Uh, I'm formulating some questions on the side as I do because I have an obsession with questions. Uh, I have things. So uh, I'm going to hit you with some heavy hitters in about one minute. Okay, cool, cool. Come on with them. Come on with them. Okay, well, who's next? We, it looks like we got Urban back. Man, you slipped out on us, but we got you now, bro. <laughs> What's going on? You got your microphone on? We don't hear you. Look at the very top of the screen. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I got you know, it. You got it? I, yeah, I got it now. It was uh, delayed. Um, I'm just a fly on the wall, man. I'm, I'm learning from the best, so. Uh, I'm just here, you know, embracing everything. Oh, cool, man. What do you do? I mean, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I write, and I'm working on learning, you know, audio engineer and production. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Your songwriter and and all that as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. What what's what's like some of your what's your main instrument and you know what do you like? Um, well, I play drums naturally. That's that's what I you know. I'm a musician, so I play the drums naturally. But you know, I like pretty much everything: soul music, R&B, pop, everything. Yeah, country yeah. gospel. Where are you at right now? Where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia. You in Atlanta? Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. All right, yeah. Cool. No, what's up? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, man. Cool. You been? Uh, uh, this is the first time you had a chance to hang out with us, right? Well, yeah, with you, I, I was on um, I was on the other hangouts. No, I had, this is my first one with you. Oh, okay, cool, cool, man. It was a pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure yeah, to meet you. Definitely, man. Thank you. To, to let everybody know too, um, because me and my aunt was talking about it as well. You know, it's definitely been in my plans as well. But I think everybody's kind of on the same page with this whole thing that we're doing here as a community. What I want to do is ramp it up to get things even more interactive. So I got something special coming up for you guys. You know, I want to see if you guys are uh, are down with it. I'm actually calling it um, a music mixing tournament. And what I'm going to do, let me explain this a little bit to you. Uh, those of you that have been following me for a while know that I have. Um, I'm the founder of the Music Mixing Success Boot Camp which I usually do semi-annually, twice a year. And um, usually it's in somewhere around April and September. You know, I'm looking to possibly start it again this April or September. But here's something I wanted to do because time is coming up so quick. I wanted to do a little twist on this one that's coming up. This next Music Mixing Success Boot Camp is also going to be a Music Mixing Success Tournament where I'm leading up to it. And I, I'm basically, this tournament is basically going to be almost kind of like a contest where we're all, it's going to be more than just a mixing contest who can do the best thing. Here's my plan, and um, you guys tell me if you think it's cool and if you think you want to participate. Um, I would love to get as many people on here. What I want to do is basically start a uh, tournament where we start out with a song that everybody is starting from the same playing ground, you know, so maybe find something online that's a free downloadable multi-track song with um, where we don't have to worry about no royalties or rights or whatever, maybe just have to get the credit or whatever. But what I want to do is we take the raw materials and elevate this thing to the best that it can be online over the course of several weeks leading up to my boot camp. 
And here's how I wanted to, to start playing out. Basically, as we do it and everything, and people will take the they'll have the same resources to start with and then what we will do is everybody will get a chance to start voting up the the favorites ones who's doing the best job of elevating it now whoever ends up on the top of that leaderboard of course they're in first place for a while but what we're gonna do is periodically change it probably once a week or something like that leading up to whoever's on the leaderboard has to reveal how they did what they did so that the next person can try to catch them and beat them using their own stuff and techniques if they choose to. The great thing about this is it's going to open up for everybody. Let everybody learn from everybody else your best stuff because you're going to try to win it and try to hold folks off and everything. But if somebody takes something that you learn, it elevates everybody because the bottom line is if they if they knock you out of that top spot, then now it's their turn. They got to show you what they did so you can snatch it back. So if we all keep doing it and keep doing it and everything. Everybody keeps showing each other their best little tricks to elevate this up and make this song better and better using the same stuff, everybody gets better. How does that sound to y'all? Does that sound like that'd be something good and interesting that everybody could really have fun with? What do y'all think? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely down for that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody feel any negatives about it? Like it wouldn't be cool for them? No, uh, we always... I, I think the nature of a human being is a challenge, so that's yeah. a good thing. I think that would be so cool, and like I said, it, it, it ends up making everybody better because when you see what somebody else is doing, it's like, oh, let me try that and see if you know I can maybe even get a little bit better, and it might spark that something that takes what that other person did and takes everybody up to that next level, and things keep ratcheting up more and more every time till we finally get to the boot camp, and at the boot camp, then I will be awarding uh, the winner you know, or maybe even the top three winners, vote getters or whatever, you know, they'll get some kind of award or a trophy or something, you know, I'm going to work on, work that all out now because um, I think people should be rewarded for that. But more importantly, what I like is to see that'll make people actually have, have to start doing some stuff. See, the biggest problem is right now that I see with Did he freeze on y'all? Am I uh, am I frozen on everybody? Yeah, he froze. You, you were frozen, frozen for a second. <laughs> am I? Still I think you now? caught up now. It, it yeah. like he the bulb okay. on us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can hear my voice though, right? Now we can. Go ahead. Okay. So good. anyway, what I was I want to do is um do this because the biggest problem that I see with a lot of people learning all this stuff, there's tons of stuff that we're all learning out here. Everybody's got some great information from the most wonderful people out here, the best of the best. But the problem is, is I'm still seeing that everybody doesn't necessarily know when to pull things out, where to pull them out, and when not to, you know, because there's so much information. It can be completely overwhelming, you know. Everybody has seen everything there possibly is about EQ out there. You know, EQ is no secret. Compression is no secret or whatever, but people still put stuff out that the EQ is not working, stuff isn't coming together, compression is not working, or the songs don't sound the same when put up against next to something else. So this elevates everybody because you're getting the best of each person's strengths, you know, and then that person in turn from sharing that knowledge gets a chance to even elevate what they just did even more. So if you're already pretty good, this is going to make you even better. But if you're just starting out, this is really going to elevate you and put you on the fast track, you know, like nothing else that's ever been done. There's been nothing else like this. Okay, so this is what I want you guys to look out for. I'm going to do the music mixing tournament, okay? And um, this is going to go back and forth, back and forth, so we're going to be jousting back and forth for somebody to get to that leaderboard. I will be announcing that to you guys uh, real shortly where we can start doing it. In fact, if anybody has some resources of some good downloadable multi-tracks, I've got a couple of places where I've got some things and all that, but let's look at something and find something that would be good for everybody. It shouldn't just be any one style, you know. Maybe even we can do two or three styles of a multi-track but I want it to have 
a lot of different elements, you know. So I want to make sure it has live elements, like, you know, it can have a, com a combination of live drums and sample drums would be great because there's some people that work in their bedroom that they've never worked with live drums. So it's going to be a challenge for them. They might be able to make the most slamming um, sample kit sound great. But when it comes to live drums, they may be may not really know what it really takes. So that's suddenly going to be a challenge to them. But that'll help elevate them, you know. So I want to make sure it has both in there. I want to make sure it has vocals, you know. So um, and preferably lead and background vocals, preferably male and female. But if we got to get more than one track with either or, that's that'll be okay. Synthesizers, of course. Prep, also guitar. And possibly maybe some live elements like maybe even horns or live strings or anything. Doesn't that element doesn't have to be in there? But if we're lucky enough to find something that does have those things, and it's a whole nother challenge because a lot of people have never dealt with that stuff. So wouldn't that be cool, guys, if we we just get into this? Uh, Definitely, I mean, I'm with it. All right, cool. Now here's another another twist that I'm thinking about as well too. Um, I'm thinking about maybe us doing um, doing it in a way where maybe we can, when we get it done or whatever, we can find a way. I don't know what the, the um, rights and stuff like that will work out to be, but I would love to find a way where we can generate some cash from doing it for charity. We pick a charity, you know, and it ain't going to be expensive, but maybe we get people to, you know, pay 99 cents for the track or whatever, or, or, you know, the final thing or whatever, and drive some folks to it and then try to do a drive where we can get some folks and get some money where we can donate it to charity. It doesn't go into anybody's pocket. We just send it to a charity and help somebody else out in the world. You know, I think that would be really cool as well. Anybody else think that's a good idea or no? Am I crazy on that one? What? All no, I mean, I feel it. I feel like it's definitely something that, that can grow into uh, fruition if you just okay. if we just write it out and, you know, try to figure out exactly, you know what I'm saying, what what we gonna go about doing it? Okay. Hillary, no I, Hillary, in I, your voice right there. You said what now? There was no enthusiasm in your voice right there. Oh no, I mean I'm just tired. I've been up for a few days. You got <laughs> hey, pay me no mind. But uh, all reason I say that. Man, we broke. We can't get a charity. We broke. <laughs> what, what is man talking about? Hey, hey, hey. over here. Oh fool. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, man. No, I'm with that though, cause uh, in high school, my English teacher, we he started a thing. Uh, I have a school program called Hip Hop Club, and basically he just taught us the elements of hip hop, mm -hmm. and uh, te teach us how to DJ and produce and stuff like that. And he wrote a grant, and we got back like uh, a, a nice sum of you know money to uh, get equipment and stuff like that to get it off the ground. So that's why I say I strongly believe in what you're trying to do, though. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, I think that would be really cool. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, too, the good thing about that is um, when you give and help people out there in the world, to me, that's the best thing we could do with our music. Music has a healing factor anyway. So I would love for us to do something that is going to help, you know, um, Go to Michael Jackson thing, heal the world. You know that. I think that's part of our responsibility out here as well. You know, and um, the the good thing is about doing this thing as well too. It'll start showing some of the developing budding superstars that are in our community here. We've got a lot of really talented people. This is going to show people that see. Because first of all, you're not going to be able to be in your comfort zone. Everybody can figure out how to mix their own stuff. You know, everybody can figure out how to mix um, their own style. But if we get something that's common that comes in out random, you know, that we all pick and say, okay, this has a lot of different elements, this makes some people really have to pull some stuff out that they may have never had to even think of before. So I think it's going to be really good and super helpful. It's going to be one of the best things to help everybody go to that next level. And the good thing is, is as we do it, the world will be watching us. And as they're watching us and the superstars start sticking there, poking their heads up and everything, folks are going to be following these people and saying, okay, that guy got something special because what they did there, wow, that took it to a whole nother level, you know. Hey, so, Khalid. Yo. How about one wrinkle, though? I don't know how many levels you're talking about doing, but if you did, like, level one, the mix 
to, to keep it on an even playing field because there's so many people here with so many plugins and outboard gear, how about like level one would be stock DAW plugins plus maybe one or two island plugins? Hey, yeah, hello, hello. That I forgot to actually mention that because yeah, because a lot of people no don't have all the resources that many of us have. So yeah, we need to level the playing field for people that are just coming in. Yeah, so That's stock and maybe you know it, it'll encourage people who don't have them to maybe buy the demo. I mean, or get get the demo to kind of be like, all right. So if we say level one is going to be stock plugins plus one waves plugin. Or yeah. one sound toys plug in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That w that's a great idea. Great yeah. idea. You know. So, so, so no super specialy plug ins, right? <laughs> you ain't doing nothing like that, right? And no super specialty <laughs> hardware either. <laughs> yeah. And that's the funny thing too, though. You can figure out. Oh, you know. No, no UAD. What'd you say? I didn't hear that. What was that? Oh, uh, man, <laughs> I forgot about that. Wait, hold on now. No, no. no. I just. Hey, but what if you don't know how to use your UAD stuff yet? I just got, I just got my Apollo. Well, that could be an island plugin. Hey, okay. that's probably okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be the island plugin. And plus, the good thing about that is, is when you, this is a perfect uh, opportunity to learn how to use it. Because trust me, somebody will be pulling that as an island plugin out, and that'll teach you you know, to dig in on some things, you know, or maybe make you try something. They've got so many plugins, but it might make you try something that you never even would have thought about trying just from from something like this. Right. So I'm really ex kind of excited about doing this because um, I really can see, you know, I know there's a lot of talented people on here, so I'm really thinking y'all going to do some amazing stuff, and I can't wait till everybody starts jacking everybody else's stuff because it's going to be like, hey, he used my technique, but it's kind of cool, you know, and then they do something, and yeah, okay, that came off of what I did, but they took it to a whole nother level, so I'm going to snatch that and take it back and take it to a whole nother level. And then it's just going to keep growing and growing and stacking on each other. I just can't wait to see what you guys are going to do with that creativity. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it then. Well, I'm glad I brought that up. I wasn't sure I was going to mention that, but something just kind of led me to say this. I feel like I've got the right people on here. And those of you that are watching us on the replay of this right now, let me mention this now. I want you guys to... Be he comes out of the worst moments. <laughs> Khalid, hey, hey, it, it is so funny. It feels like a robot, and his battery just died so random. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He just dropped out, Khalid, like right at the right moment. And as a matter of fact, oh, okay. I keep forgetting to see. I'm on this hotel line, so anything's liable to happen. So, um, anyway. Can you guys still hear me? Everybody cool? Give me the thumbs up. Y'all got me? Okay. Go to my email and shoot me an email with any ideas that you have for this. My email address is kalik at kalik-o-vision.com. So that's K-H-A-L-I-Q, kalik at kalik-o-vision. Dot com. Just go there and hit me up with an email, and um, let's see if we can make this blow up into something really big. I think it'll be a really great idea and, and super helpful. And um, yeah, yeah, just hit me up. I want to know. Make this happen, guys. Okay, so um, anybody else got something else? Any other? We haven't questions? finished introducing everybody. Getting everybody oh, out. Really? Oh, I was, was going to come up with my questions. I said a minute. Man, too, hey, so. I'm I'm over here getting my questions together too. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going for the introductions. Who else hasn't been introduced? I think it, we got everybody, didn't we? No, nah, remember I it said me? You said hold up. Who 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 else? Mitchell. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey Mitchell. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we did introduce Mitchell. He was one of the first ones, but let's do it again. Hello everyone. Mitchell, uh, audio engineer from the Netherlands. And Nightcrawler, and uh, I'm just hanging out, taking a break. Wait, we already introduced Mitchell. I, I'm yeah, telling yeah, you, it's one of the first ones. Click, you are not believing me, man. This old age is getting to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell, we were live when we introduced you. We're, no, we were. 
He was the no. one that told us it was 4 a.m. where he was at. We weren't live yet, though. Were we? No. Nah. I, okay. I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, but Woo! man, man okay. I'm glad it's you, bro. I'm glad it's oh, you, because <laughs> I am forgetting too much stuff. I'm like, man, it's I'm dying good. over here. <laughs> Everybody, uh, was Anna, Anna was teasing me because I I went out and I forgot I had driven um my car, and I was like, what's my car doing here? And um, I mean, it's it's bad, bro. <laughs> oh, not good. Well, I think um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody got you, you guys said you had some questions and things like that? Y'all want to toss around? Let's 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 hit it. All right, I got one. What's up? All right, when you was um tracking strings on the uh, Justin Timberlake album mm -hmm. on that um to the end of the time, do you remember what mics you used or what technique you used to get those strings like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I used um, let me see for I used the um. Three point mic system, and I'm trying to. Uh, I always forget the name of this um this technique. Um, I use Bloom Line. It wasn't was Bloom it? Line. It it was um. Deca you used the Deca Tree technique. Deca Tree. That's what I used. The Deca Tree. Um, okay. And I had um uh, Neumann um uh what was the I'm trying to think of it was the um. You, uh, the big fat you, uh, oh man. 80, 87? No, it wasn't the 87. It was the big fat ones. It wasn't the 87 or 47. It was the 67. Oh, 67 is the same size. Yeah. Did I, it was, a, did I use the 67? No, it wasn't the 67s either. I think the 67 um, was the two. Actually, I did have some 67s. I had some 67s and I had the, um, the fatter ones that are fatter than the 67s. That's what was in the Deca tree. The 67 I was using for the room mics wide, and then um, I had spot mics over each section. You know, um, uh, uh, I had pencil mics, I believe, on the um, on the cellos. I had some um, AKG 451s over the uh, violin and viola sections, and um, uh, I can't remember what some of the other ones were. I have to look look that up again. But yeah, it's pretty pretty standard setup. You know, I got the main sound from the Deca Tree and in the in the room mics from the sixty seven, and then I had the spot mics on the individual sections. Oh, okay, that's what's up. Did y'all use any any plug in like sa uh, string sounds like the layer or anything, or was it just all natural? Yeah, that was all natural. Um, uh, live strings. I forget how big the string section was now, but um, you know, it's a pretty standard s string setup for the records. Okay. And um, yeah, I had to follow um, I had to follow sheet music on a lead sheet, and I can here's here's a little tip that you know because I don't really sight read music. You know, I can if you put sheet music in front of me. I can kind of figure out what's going on, you know, I know, because I know a little bit. So I can kind of see from how the intervals, you know, the notes are jumping around. So I can tell if the intervals are jumping around in the third, perfect, fourth, this, stuff like that. Octaves, big jumps and stuff like that. Rhythmically, I can kind of figure it out. But I don't really sight read. Like those guys spot, sight read like it's anything. And me as an engineer, any engineer that gets a live stream day, you're expected to be spot on. You need to go to which bar. So I had to immediately, um, when I was learning the song, um, figure out a way to not let them know that I'm not a sight reader like y'all, you know, because you can't be caught up like that. You know, they could kind of tell a little bit because, you know, they know right away, just like reading a book. For me, it might take a second to kind of figure it out, but I kind of know. I would also, the way I learned how to read the charts, so even if I didn't know the the, the um, notes per se, I could read the landscape of how the notes were moving. So using my ears and everything, I've got uh, pretty great ears, so I could tell, I could hear how things are moving around, so I could kind of figure, oh, that's that section, because my ears are telling me, because it's matching how I'm seeing. Because sheet music, if you look at it and don't think about it as the notes, it almost looks like waveforms, like we look at when we're looking and editing inside Pro Tools and all that. You really kind of kind of correlates a, a lot that way. So that's one way that um, if anybody gets a gig, a live gig to do live strings or something like that that requires you, or even jazz gigs or things like that where you may have to 
get through lead sheets and stuff like that. You know, if you don't necessarily know how to sight read music or whatever, you can still figure out ways and shortcuts of getting along and getting through that stuff. It's, what I've been doing for years, even though I don't, you know, sight read or anything. Sometimes people thought I could read just depending on how complex or whatever. Because my ear is way faster than I could ever read. I've always had a great ear. So I can pick it up and kind of tell what's going on. And if my eyes and ears can match up what I'm seeing as some landmarks, I can kind of figure out where I'm at and how to move along and go and navigate within the session. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what's up, though. And, um, as far as the uh, Angie Stone record, when you mixed it, did you mix that at Stax or in Memphis, or did you mix that at your own studio? No, that was done in um, uh, Marvin Gaye's studio. Uh, it's called Marvin's Room, and um, you know, great, excellent, um, excellent place. Tons of gear and everything. And um, most of, the, surprisingly, a lot of that stuff was um, they used uh, Reason. Actually, a lot of the stuff was tracked with reason, the sounds and everything, and then I just put my little finishing because it really sounded good. I was surprised that reason sounded sounded that good, you know. So, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I forgot to mention that too. Like uh, me and my partner, we we write songs on the David Porter now. So. Oh, uh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, you right in the, you're in the right place, bro. For sure. Trying to be, man. Trying to be. Yeah, man. Yeah, doing it. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let some more people got uh, ask some questions because I got plenty more. Okay, cool, cool. What's up, y'all? Anybody? Um, I think. Uh, well, somebody said they had something. Dwayne had a question, but go ahead. I mean, Gavin, he he he's doing. Good. <laughs> you know, hey, I was watching the. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep going since ain't nobody else gonna say nothing, but. Uh, the, uh, can you can you talk about the uh, Medium Man soundtrack a little bit? Oh wow! You know, see, I, I was just watching it yesterday. That they, hey, that's that's why I was over slick laughing like, wow! I was watching the movie yesterday. Now I get to ask somebody about it. You know, it's so funny, man, because um, uh, uh, my aunt was always asked me this about the different things I work. on. I totally forgot about that. So as soon as you say that, I was like, Meteor Man, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. I'll be honest with you, man. I can, I don't remember nothing because it's, you know, <laughs> hard. You know, you do different little things, and um, some of them stick out other work done and then on to the next. So I know that I, I worked on it. I couldn't tell you any specific thing that I did on it because you know it was just I was just in the middle of working and just getting it done. Gotcha. I wish I could say more on that, but yeah, I remember when it came. It's always nice when you um when you get on um different um movies and stuff like that too. You know, um, I had forgotten that I you know like I did um I forgotten that I had worked with Herbie Hancock on that um movie Blow. We did the, some of the, the soundtrack on that. And um, you know, I totally had forgotten about. It. I have somebody, and somebody happened to mention to us like, "Yeah, man, you, didn't you do that?" And I was like, "Did I? I? I totally forgot about it." You know, and that that was the movie itself. I think was nominated for something you know, back in the day. I was like, "I totally forgot that I did that." And um, Jeffrey Osborne, I worked with him, and he did the the lead vocal the theme song to uh, that Eddie Griffin movie, Undercover Brother. <laughs> and I, I totally forgot about that. I have to see it on TV the other day. I said, like, oh, man, I forgot about that. And a lot of other different ones. It's, you, you forget, man. You just get in the middle. You do that wow, stuff. Okay. But uh, everybody you work with other than um, the uh, We Are The World record, who would you say was your favorite person to work with? Favorite person to work well, without a doubt, man. I mean, my boy was Jeffrey Osborne because we spent so many days and nights in the studio learning and experiment, experimenting. And the thing that I liked about Jeffrey because Jeffrey started out as a musician, so he allowed, and and I started out as a musician, so he allowed me to experiment and and, and push some things that um when you're in the pressure of doing a normal situation, normal sessions and all that, you normally wouldn't be able to do it. He was totally cool with me trying some stuff. Jeffrey and Herbie Hancock, because Herbie was the other one. Herbie is just like, you know, hey man, 
get in here and try some stuff. And he would tell me and Dave Hampton all the time, you know, this is the lessons that he learned from Miles Davis. You know, he don't, you know, Miles wanted you to make mistakes. That's what Herbie would tell us because he figured you, you don't got in your comfort zone. You're playing the same riffs all the time, night after night. You ain't trying no more. He'd rather hear you make some mistakes so because I at least knows you're trying and digging and pushing forward and everything. So that's what Herbie did for us. He was like, hey, y'all, you know, uh, you know, don't be playing it safe. Get in there and push some stuff because you might come up on something that's really cool, you know. And those two guys – as far as just working, being cool, con, um, contributing to my spirit, because they were always supportive, even at times when I messed up. And trust me, I messed up <laughs> quite a few times too, you know, because that's part of it. Sometimes you have to mess up to get better, you know. You got to drop the ball to get better, you know. Is there any, um, like you said, experiment with Herbie Hancock? Was there any like uh, techniques you learned, like when you was micing certain instruments or pianos for them? Was there any techniques you learned by accident that just turned out to sound real good on a particular record or something? Well, yeah. What I like working with Herbie is, um, you know, because he's a piano player, so you really have to you got to capture his piano right. So he had this beautiful um, Fazioli piano that he had in his living room. You know, so the way we were set up, of course, we got a mic up in the house and run stuff all through wires through the, you know, the the living room into through an office, through doors, through the kitchen, stuff like that. And um, sometimes we'd be doing that stuff and um, might have a, a a video crew there videoing what we're doing, like when we was doing um, the thing for uh, Christina and all them. Uh, there was video crews there and stuff like that, and we still have to do it and make stuff happen. Sometimes provide them with a video feed and all that while doing the recording. And um, I learned a lot, had a great time, because while it's a lot of pressure, Herbie was always so cool. He was never, he never freaks out about anything. He, you know, just stays so level-headed because he, he, you know, he's a Buddhist, so first of all, he, he, he believes about having control of your life and your destiny and, you know, things that occur, you know, they're part of, they're part of a whole bunch of connected things. And then if you stay in touch with things, you can guide where, where the outcome is going to be, you know, and, and not tripping on stuff like that. So that kept me really feeling cool about myself because, you know, I'm one of those guys that you know, because I'm always beating up myself. Nobody wants to do a better job than colleague. There's a lot of people that want to do it as much as me, you know, but I'm at that level mindset wise, which I think is what got me in the room more than skill set wise, you know, because I think, at, you know, engineering and, and things like that, there's a certain level that you get to and then what you know doesn't matter. Who you are is what matters. That's the difference. And so when I get my head together from all these little things like a guy like Herbie saying, Hey man, do you, I want to see, I want to see what's up. That's why I called you in in the first place because I like that you think different. I like that you approach things different. And, um, you know, when I, when I do stuff like that, it makes me better and it makes me not feel as insecure about myself because I'm my own biggest enemy. I beat myself up more than anybody else possibly could because I always want to do a good job. I always want to do it better. I'm never happy with anything I do. I always feel I can do better. Yeah, you're, you're your worst critic, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And I, what I found is that is what everybody really is, that, that um, anybody – that really gets to uh, that other level, they're never really satisfied, you know. So the best of the best people that we've all seen out here, we've all worked with, they all got that same kind of thing, you know. So I just like to know that, okay, well, I'm, I'm on the right track with the right mindset of being like that because there's a lot of people, I always say, don't stop short, and there's a lot of people that stop short. I even know myself many times back in the day, you know, I'd be, oh, that's cool, that's good enough, you know, and then somebody told told me and pulled my coat, he's like, listen, man, you can't be thinking like that, because that makes you, and then, like I said, Herbie pushing us, you know, don't 
get in that comfort zone of stop trying new stuff and stop trying to push the envelope because then that makes you kind of mediocre you know makes you like everybody else on that same thing so me I don't care about making mistakes I don't care if somebody likes what I do or doesn't like what I do because I'm just going to keep doing and being the best me and that's what I encourage you and everybody else to do if you do that you're going to be good forever so basically, you should definitely focus on becoming a better person and knowing yourself more than anything before, you know, the technical side of anything. That's, what, that's always going to lead you right because if you focus on that, you're automatically going to do things at a great level. You know, I told um, – it's just like um, Dave Hampton is here and a lot of other people. Um, uh, we got Maude on here, Bill and all these guys. It's like it doesn't matter what you do. You know, to me, it doesn't matter what you do because, um, you know, like me, I started out as a guitar player. And I got pretty good as a guitar player because my mindset made me want to do the best at being guitar. So I started getting pretty good at that, and, and um, people started noticing it, and uh, that, that got me indoors and got me on things and all that. You know, now, at some point when I first came out here to California, I realized, okay, I was pretty good, but I still had a long way to go, and there's so many people that were way better than where I was at. So for my original goal of wanting to be, you know, quote, unquote, the best guitar player in the world, that was not going to happen unless I just completely dug in in a whole other way. So that's when I started shifting gears and realizing, okay, well, I don't have to be the best guitar player in the world. I just want to be good at what I do where people, you know, say okay good job man cool same thing with engineering I, you know I, I don't have to be the best engineer in the world I don't believe that term because I see that there's guys out here that are doing stuff at high levels a lot of people you know I'm sure yourself and all that all you guys have, I, I've got the utmost respect for everybody that comes on here because I know the only difference between like people like us you know I consider myself like kind of a mid-tier engineer you know the top tier engineers there's only like you can probably count them on two hands in the world guys that get all the stuff well then you've got a whole world full of everybody else that may be just as good but there's only so many slots you know and and, and being just as good as somebody is a relative term anyway you know I've gotten a chance to do things where somebody that had way more credits than me but the folks ended up liking what I did better just because I was the right fit it comes down to fit. It has nothing to do with what you know and what your credentials are and all that. So no matter how long I've been in the game, somebody can come behind me and be the right fit for somebody else, and they may have only been doing it two years. So, you know, and I never trip on that because I know that's the reality of it. Be the best person you can be for whatever you do, and it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to do it at a high level. Morris Mingo has came in, um, Khalid, just to let you know, and I put a name, uh, El Eli, his Gmail off down there at the bottom. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. Don't you know Eli? Um, he worked with Tremaine with, at um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis's spot. Um, I and mean, not Elysius. His name's Elysius. When he comes in, you might know him. Just, just you know, letting you know. Is that the one that says Morris or what? Uh, Elysius. He's he um. His Gmail is over in the chat room. Oh, okay. Chat on the side. Would you add him? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, let and me Morris find is just a troublemaker down there. Oh, <laughs> I see Morris. Morris, while I'm doing that, kind of introduce yourself on here. <laughs> oh, what's here. up, everybody? Um, I'm here Morris. it is, Yeah. I'm a, um, I'm, I probably missed the first. I, I do this uh, music stuff. I've been doing music for a while. Spent a lot of years doing a lot of different little stuff with some folks. Um, <clears throat> I actually heard one thing, Khalid mentioned um, that movie Undercover Brother. I actually did one of the same tracks with Bootsy. I spent about uh, about 11, 12 years MDing for Bootsy Collins doing productions and all that stuff. So, wow. so you know, I got to do a lot of stuff with Bootsy. I mean, I've done stuff, with, you know, Charlie Daniels, uh, Snoop, a lot of people like that. Just doing a lot of stuff, video game stuff. Cool. How oh, cool, man. That's cool. <laughs> Morris, Morris, unmute yourself real quick, Morris. Okay. I don't know how, what happened. Okay, my bad. Okay, you're Can back. You hear me? Yeah, we got you. Yeah, but I, I just, man, you know, 
I, I consider myself a student, though, man. I, I, I um, you know, I'm, I'm a piano player, organ player, you know, keyboard player. Still, still do that, um, you know, my church stuff. And <clears throat> so I actually started a, a few years ago, after um, the documentary CD in 2011, started doing specifically concentrating on stuff, you know, my gospel stuff, Christian records, and just doing stuff to spread love, man, and using the music as a platform to just Spread love, man. I, I, I try to, and everything I do, man, I use it as an opportunity, man, to try to grow, to learn from people like Khalid. Khalid was one of the innovators, one of my big brothers that, like, Khalid was very instrumental <clears throat> in really helping him become, like, a really good engineer. I mean, it was like a point Khalid name was coming up, like, every day it seemed like he <laughs> talked about engineering stuff. Wow. But he, I'm going to try to get him on here. His name is Roger Willis. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. I yeah. didn't know that. That's, okay, cool. Yeah, that's my dude, man. He's like, he's a big brother to me, man. He, he's a blessing, man. And um, so we talked, and, um, you know, he, he brought, uh, got me hip because I wasn't really all the way hip because, you know, I started, you know, starting the, um, I just started really doing the engineering thing probably around 2006, 2007. You know, I would be out in the studio, and some of anybody, everybody would be out there doing stuff. But you know, I was I was just like kind of focusing on the music stuff, just playing, and I was always worried about let me just play, throw some keys on this track. Can I do this? Can I do that? And that was cool. And then all of a sudden, man, one time I was working on a record, man, and um, and it was like you know we couldn't go. We were going in, in this place in Nashville called Sound Kitchen, mm. and we had mixed the record in uh, Sound Kitchen. So we went down there working on, you know, like the Need VRs. You know, some of them old ones with the Martin Sound automation, you know, the old stuff. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we were doing that, man. And, and the, um, there's an, another record came, and she couldn't really afford the budget to go down there. You know, we were doing like, you know, maybe like, you know, the, the, the studio was like 1000 to 1500 a day, you know, plus the engineer. We were bringing in, so paying him for a day, and she couldn't afford to do it. And I was like, all right. So I tried to start messing with stuff, and I'm like, well, you know, all my first stuff sounded like crap, but, I mean, it was still like a start. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It was like a whole nother world. It was like I was learning how to cook. And I'm still learning. I mean, I, I look at it like this, man. I know how to make a couple dishes. You know, I know how to make a few dishes, but I keep reading the books, man, to try to get some more recipes under my belt. There you, you go. Know what I'm saying? And that's how I look at it, man. I look at it like it's a recipe. And, Kalik, I give much respect to you, man, because – um. The thing that I always try to do, man, is I always try to give credit, man, to the innovators, people that have done stuff and care enough about the craft to share stuff with people. A lot of people won't tell people nothing. That's true. And, man, people like that, man, I just have I have much respect for innovators like yourself that that do great stuff, man, and, and share it. You know what I'm saying? That's so valuable, man, because, like, a lot of the stuff I wouldn't have have a clue of, man, getting to know or even getting to do, man, if I didn't have people like you, man. And I appreciate you taking the time out, man, to give us knowledge and information. I, I, I totally respect that, man. And I'm grateful to even be able to sit here amongst all your cats. Because I know I look up people's name. I I will Google every single one of y'all mugs. So I'm going to find out what all y'all do. <laughs> you going to find on me is Hangouts. <laughs> That's the good thing about these, man. You know, hey, man. Um, you you weren't on here earlier, but um, I mentioned that I'm I'm gonna be doing the uh, music mixing tournament, where we're gonna be um we're all gonna be competing but helping each other mix some mix some songs, and then whoever wins, they got to tell the next they got to tell everybody how they did it. You know, just did. using stock plugins and maybe one one little cool thing that's a little specialty, and then they gotta tell everybody exactly how they did it so that the next person can try to beat them and knock them off the top. Right. And then they got to tell the next person. So everybody keeps getting better as we keep going on because everybody's showing the best of the best. Iron sharp as iron, man. Iron sharp as iron. That's yeah, exactly. Up. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be. We gonna have some serious heat happening very soon. I look forward to that. I can't wait to get all these ideas from everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can't wait. I can't wait, man. Cool, cool, cool. Well, hey, we got um Elysius on here, I guess. Um, and I'm, I'm over here, brother. We got the top of your dome, so uh, you might have to fill the yes, sir. <laughs> sir, what up, guys? What's up, guys? We know your hand very well, bro. <laughs> 
What's up, guys? How you guys doing today? We doing all right. How about you? Where you at, man? I'm in uh, L.A. Well, you're in L.A.? Oh, okay. In LA, LA. Where are you yeah. from? Uh, originally from the island of Barbados. Oh, Bar- Barbados. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I live in L.A. now. Um, been out here probably almost two years now. No kidding. But I've, I've been here before. You know, I was here. I, I, I was here before, um, and then I came back. I left and came back. I went to New York and came back here. Oh, cool. You cool. didn't like yeah. New York? Just the weather. You know, I didn't really dig the weather. No. <laughs> not really into the cold, you know. They're catching it now, too, man. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Not into the cold at all, man, so. What you know. doing, man? You getting ready to take us on a tour or something? You, look, you were about to walk us through your studio, right? No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not, no. It's like, no, man. It looks like a Spike Lee joint. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I was trying to get into to hang out with you guys, man. You know, just to to share some of the knowledge you guys are you guys have been dishing out. So I'm just here listening, learning. Oh, uh, cool, man. Well, you know, share some stuff with us, or if you got a question or something, feel free. Sure, I will definitely, will definitely. Cool, man. Well, we um welcome in any way. Um, hey guys, and plus I want to let everybody know I'm not gonna make this one real long because, like I said, I'm here in a hotel right now, and we got some little meet and greets about to happen and things like that. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss today again with y'all because I had missed the previous ones. This is event season, so I've been back and forth at events. My, I want you to come on, man, and maybe tell them a little bit because Mike got that chance to hang with out with us last week in an event um, that my fiance was uh, having for everybody about how to interview Red Carpet Interview Secrets, it was called, and she was teaching everybody how to get those dream stars and everything. So this can apply to us as well because, um, you know, we end up running into or we know a lot of people, and as a secondary way of, of doing some things or even to get an in, it's good to know some things and make people feel like they're on the red carpet, like they're a star and you know, all that. But my, my, talk about that a little bit and tell them what you got a chance to see hanging out with Ray. You know, it, it if I make women cry, it's, it's looked on quite a bit different. But every time I turned around, <laughs> there was a woman crying at this event. <laughs> I mean, it, it, smart, crying and cry, I'm like, are you sick? Raven had them, with, and it was tears of joy. Yeah, it was tears, tears of appreciation. Um, Because she took the time out before the event, um, like she actually took the time out, and and time is very valuable, and um, showed that she cared. Um, And so they would get up there and and start thanking her and start crying. I'm like, are y'all serious? All y'all going to get up? I ain't going to cry. (laughs) (laughs) But um, she she ran through, and it's interesting. um, I wasn't planning on this. I went down there for a Grammy thing, and the clique told me he had that going on, so I went over there to help him with that. And what it is is the information that's given out at these seminars, there it, it changes you. It um like I left with a whole different perspective. Even say just my my um, my conversations with Kalik. Um and I, I think I said this to him, but I'm not sure. Um but like Kalik will start speaking a language using words that I'm not familiar with and I know these words have references right and so he might say one word and if he's with somebody who is going through the same stuff he's going through he'll say one word and it means a bunch of things he says it to me I grab the dictionary and it's not exactly the same feel once I went through this I'm now seeing Khalid's words differently and I can actually do what I call a preemptive strike um, on whatever we need done so Khalid might start making a move and then I, I'll be like hmm well, I can help Khalid by doing this, and it and it's precision. It, it works. But the stuff they were teaching there was stuff that you not only apply to um, any radio show or whatever. It's it was life stuff, and it just I you look at the world different when you come to these um, seminars. So it's like you go to a seminar and you're expecting, okay, I'm gonna learn about a radio show, blah blah blah. Next thing you know, you're using it on your kids. Um, using it at work, it's everything. So it's like I don't know how much I'm allowed to give away about the seminars, but what I can tell you is it's a it's a game changing type thing. Um, how how much are we allowed to give away about the seminars? Since she says, yeah, whatever you feel, bro. We, we just, we just, you know, um, 
we, we are open books out here, you know. So. You, you, you know what, though? I was sitting there thinking, man, I wish I could make women cry happy tears like that. I mean, if I could just, I want some of that raven skill. I, this is what I was seriously sitting there thinking, like, this woman's got all these women crying and just thanking her, like, I want that ability. Because <laughs> women cry, it's a whole different reality. She was pretty awesome, wasn't she? Yeah, she I mean, was kicking butt. I Raven mean, was slaying. Right, you know, and and I, I'm sitting there looking in awe, oh, like, this is crazy. And all of them were just thanking her, and they were feeling good and gaining knowledge. And you, she had experts come, like, you have an expert come in and explain stuff to you. And it's just like you open up a, friend new, a, a brand new can of life um, reality stuff. And then you leave, you know, just better. It, yeah. it was weird, you know. It was, well, this is why I wanted to um uh, have you guys hear from him as well too, because you know, I do things a little bit different, and part of what I want to do is show musicians that there are a lot of things beyond just the notes that we play, beyond the compression compressors that we tweak or the EQs that we sculpt and stuff like that. There's little stuff that um for your life, to build your life, you know, there ain't no plugins for that, so we have to go out and, and, and plug into society out here and connect with people on different levels and different ways, you know, our industry touches everybody in the world, everybody loves music and needs music, it's been proven that it's a healing factor and all that, but for us to do this and thrive at it as a, um, business, the music business and the music industry, we have to understand some other things that aren't directly connected to, you know, the stuff that we are learning out here. That's why I say all these YouTube videos and tutorials and stuff like that, all that's good, but you, you, you've got to know when to use things, when not to, and more importantly, more than anything, do like Raven does, it all has to be connected to the heartstrings, you know. That when it gets down inside somebody into their internal soul, that's what makes the difference. That's what music is supposed to do. So that's why when I talk to you guys and I always say, you know, all this technical stuff we're talking is cool, but I always just take it down to one simple thing. What does it sound like or what does it feel like? It's always just those two things. If we can always keep and remember to get back to that you'll find that you really have to do a lot less than you think you have to do and you will build it in on the front end so it'll make the back end a ton easier you know so uh, you know that's my rant for that you know I was very proud to be a part of that I was very happy to see my art come and hang because he came in and he was really just gonna come in like you said after his event he ended up hanging out with us for two whole days and after the event and helped help me tear down you know he was really into it and um, him and Dean and and there's a lot of people in there you know and the guys is in the you froze again yeah. I was wiping a tear or two here and there. And I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it was and very for those funny. who don't know, I got click on video dancing. What he was talking about <laughs> is on my wall. You go look on my wall, scroll down, you will see him dancing. <laughs> Going in now. On, yeah. on my way. <laughs> Flat out. Click is over there dancing. Um but uh like when I you guys have to remember no matter what I say, it's gonna be honest. And and those of you who know me and Pensado students. Um, like some of the clashes I get in with people is because of my just straight honesty. And so when I say that about Raven, I'm being just honest. Um, like when, when I told Angela her beat was sexier just because she was a female, it was just sexier to me. That might sound screwed up to people, but that's an honest statement. And so what I said about um, these women being there crying and, and, and um, it was a life-changing event for them, that's not me BSing. I'm not going to get on here and BS you. I won't BS you for Kalik or Dave Hampton or nothing. I, I, I'm, that's part of my thing is I, I tell you straight. And I, and I stand with Kalik because the brothers we're standing, standing with, he is you know, the real deal. He's quality. He's coming at you honest and from the heart. And um, if it was any crap, I'd, I, I'd walk away. Yeah, um, but that, these seminars, um, like that stuff with Raven, that's, it's, it's awesome stuff. And it's not all... Not all this seminar stuff is, like he said, not all about compression and whatever. There, there's way more to this stuff than that. Yep, yep, yep. 
So anyway, I'm so I'm I'm so glad that you guys got a chance to get on here with me. Um, we're gonna wrap it up because um, like I said, well, a couple of things. No, so any final parting questions or anything like that, and then um, I want to respect y'all's time. I I got a question. Okay, what's up, Marish? Hey, uh, just quickly, I'm uh, doing this free uh, project, uh, just one off, uh, recording a song for an artist. It's for non-profit, so I'm offering my services. I'm doing drums and also mixing and everything. But when the project started, she said, oh, it's just one song about such and such political view. And I'm like, okay, let's punch it out, you know, mm -hmm. maybe one or two weeks. But now it's dragging and dragging and dragging, and I'm spending way too much time than I thought initially I would because... When I'm tracking her vocals and or mixing, she's extremely particular about everything, and it's it's sort of draining so much time, which I thought it wouldn't initially. And I'm like, oh my god, when is it gonna finish? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just asking. Obviously, this is a non-technical question, but I'm just asking you. The next time when I approach someone or someone approaches me. How do you how do you sort of put down your you know your rules or your way of working and say look if you want to do it if it's free it's gonna be in, done in two weeks uh, I can give you ten so hours. So completely whatever. free. You're not chart. Uh, you're, you're not being paid anything at all. Uh, she just paid me for some of my traveling expenses. Okay. Uh, but so nothing. What you would do, I mean, I've been there, and, and it's okay to do free stuff. Yeah. I've been there and done that, too, but what I find is um, people don't appreciate free. That's what I've been learning over the course of time. This is mm -hmm. a, actually a business lesson I've been learning, too, which is why, um, you know, when I'm giving away, like, information for free and all that, I'm doing that to just, in general, help. But when I'm applying something to do it for a business thing, the people yeah. that I want to attract to be with me on the inner level and everything, those are people that got to be serious. And, and most serious people are willing to um, invest something. So that's yeah. the test you need to see. For the, you need to cut it, uh, cut it off with her, and or tell her, you know, here's here's, you know, I've done this much, but uh, you know, this is where we'll get this last little bit in, and everything. Mm. And if you want to continue with me, then you have to set a fee. Or being able to mm. do that, you know, make mm. it reasonable if you know that she's um she's uh struggling to make the payments or whatever. But the thing mm. is, is this will make somebody when they have to put some skin in the game themselves, they're really going to step up with who they are rather than abusing you and and not mm. respecting your time and yeah and that you're doing a thing like that. So at some point, you got to start. Oops. To take it to a certain level, get it, get a deliverable to her, whether it's a rough mix that you feel comfortable with, based mm. on okay, we I can do one more for you, but you know, I've no, got to, um, we've got to go on the clock if we need to go beyond this thing now, and then work mm. out something that can be comfortable with both, but make her have some skin in the game, so that mm -hmm. I can feel okay with it. Now it still may be crazy. You know, yeah. but the bottom line is, yeah. once you make a deal, you got to stick with the deal. So yeah. give yourself an exit strategy on that deal. Mm. People yeah. tend to, when they have to pay some money, though, they tend to get their act together when the money starts <laughs> stacking up, and get your mm. money in advance if you can. You know. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. Okay. I'll also put my jazz tracks down here in the box whenever okay. you get time to listen. Cool, cool. And uh, everybody, um, I'm gonna say. Um, uh, say my email address one more time. Shoot me any ideas that you have for this mixing tournament. Uh, it's my email is Kalik, which is spelled K H A L I Q at Kalik dash O dash vision dot com. That's Kalik at Kalik dash O dash vision dot com. Hit me up if you got some ideas for me. Um, if you got um, some resources for uh, downloading some free multi tracks that maybe we can uh, work on. What I'm going to do is check out some stuff and hone it down to maybe about four or five different ones that I think will be good candidates with, with all the elements that we need. And then I'm going to ask either y'all on a hangout or send it out to my email list and then just get y'all to vote and pick on maybe two or three of them, 
you know, that we can all work from the same point of view. Okay? So anyway, guys, um, I am ready to get out of here, and I will catch you guys. We're going to do it again on Sunday. Now, I'll be going back to L.A. on Sunday. So, um, Maad, I'll let you know that if I get delayed or anything, then, you know, I may have to do like we did and might have to come in later and adjust the time or something like that. But I think we should be okay. So noon Pacific, 12 noon Pacific on Sunday is when I'm planning on doing the next thing out. But if the times happen to change or anything or anything gets a little weird, just give me that leeway. I'm, I, I want to let you know now, but it is my intention to do another thing out on Sunday. I would love to have everybody that's on here now, if you can make it on Sunday, please do. Shoot me in your email so that I have your address and so I can also put you guys in for the hangout so that you can make sure that you always get invited when I do these things. Okay? All Everybody right. have a wonderful evening. I appreciate y'all, and um, I'll catch y'all on Sunday. All right, y'all. Nice you very meeting much. everybody. Okay. Nice meeting everyone as well, too. See so, right, ya. Thank you. Everyone. you. We'll talk nice to meeting you. you. All right, y'all. Be cool. Take care, guys. All right.